Hello everyone! So, I haven't done a Hot Takes video since the game released, and now that we've had a little over a month with it, let's go over your guys' opinions, whether they be good or not, just things that are relatively controversial. Let's go. Squid School says, and this is story mode related, this is the only one about it, so skip to this timestamp if you don't want to see it. Outside of his experience in story mode, which is an awesome reference, Big Man is a disappointing first male idol. So much less expressive and representative of so much less culture and personality than the others. Yeah, I do think his design is relatively basic. I do think that kind of works color scheme wise, like the gray does contrast for certain things like their logo on the news screen. But as a whole, yeah, I do wish they did a little bit more with him. I wish he had more of a role in some of the music they play and I don't even really pay attention to who does what lyrics, but he's like practically never in them. And I think in general, he just doesn't do as much as I wish he would. His design's amazing, obviously, but I think everything else could definitely be better. They should have waited another two months minimum before releasing the game launch was incredibly unpolished. I'm not sure. I think there was a lot of bugs on launch, but I don't know if a lot of the bugs were really game-breaking. There were definitely some server issues that needed to be tweaked, though, and I think that was the main thing patches have helped slowly. But as a whole, I'm not sure. Maybe this is partly bias of I just did not want to play Splatoon 2 for another two months, but I'm personally kind of okay with it, and to me, the minor bugs really didn't interfere with my experience. Obviously, the two exceptions being the Mudmouth bugs and the Tenebrella bugs, as both of those just do not let you play the game. <laughs> salmon Run Freelance is fine, says Brian. The developers were smart, putting the highest Salmon Run rank checkpoint at EVP 40 for now, and much further away from HLM than Splatoon 2. It's already difficult enough to filter out players not ready to face the fact that they aren't as good as they think they are at Salmon Run. Yeah, I mean, Salmon Run is just straight up way harder this game. I'm sure everyone has felt it, and in Splatoon 2, reaching maximum difficulty was pretty easy. I like that it's a bit harder, and I like that it's a bit harsher. Silver says Card Shark is better than Dab. We've seen a resurgence in Dab, despite how cringe it's been treated forever because it's just been a while and it's in Funny Squid Game. But yeah, once that phase wears off though, yeah, nah, the actual good emotes like Card Shark will be their rightful place at the top. Zon says Leader is horrible for the game and is the reason why half the maps are unplayable. I think the community should seriously look in a temporary banning it before it gets gutted in the next patch. Okay, first of all, banning weapons is a terrible idea that we should not go to while patches are still happening. But secondly, I find this tweet funny because the logic is just kind of in reverse here. The maps being horrible is what makes E-Leader feel horrible for the game. Not E-Leader makes the maps feel terrible. Hammerhead and Mahi and all that are terrible if E-Leader's not in the game. It's not like that weapon really changes things. The only map that I think E leader drastically makes worse is mincemeat which is also arguably one of if not the worst stages in the entire game already so i don't think it really is a fault of e leader it's just the stage design gets rid of the main way to deal with e leader which is to flank it and go on routes it can't look at and a lot of the maps like undertow can't do that so yes it's a stage problem not a weapon problem. Krim has three of these. I'm going to go through all of them just this once. Reef Slider is meant for positioning and not killing. I mean, yeah, this should be obvious. If you blew up a baller, you would probably get shot afterward, and Reef Slider doesn't even have the iframes. It has a good 60 damage hit, which emphasizes more comboing, but not blowing up directly next to someone. Yes. Gluga is just as good as VDS and Tetra. Now, if just as good means in whatever proper comp you have, it has the same maximum potential as these weapons, then yeah, maybe I could see it. Gluga did get squid roll in this game and a literal perfect kit. So I do think it has more of an argument and can kind of play the way it wants to, whereas Splatoon 2 kits, I think, limited its potential. That being said right now, Tetra and Squelcher are both very good with specific comps and good outside of them. Squelcher is really good against double dually QR because of Wave Breaker, and Tetra is really good with QR because it's a Tetra that has four rolls and shoots while it's rolling. Gluga is extremely comp dependent, and I think we won't really know until we see a Gluga in an actual team running an actual comp around the Gluga capable of getting results. And right now, I have not seen a single Gluga comp that actually piques my interest. Toxic Mist is really strong in this game and should be played a lot more than it is currently. Now, this is an opinion that I also sort of shared originally, and it was especially a factor of Splatoon 3 having different changes and namely the maps having more chokes, which is also what he thinks is the main reason according to his reply. However, I completely disagree at this point, and I actually think Mist is one of the worst sub-weapons in the entire game. Here's the problem. Mist is really good 
instead of walling out choke points, like you can throw a mist and if someone walks through it, you can like respond to it and such. But that's its only use case. That's it. And that's only situational depending on the map layouts. Outside of that, it really doesn't do that much. And most importantly, it does not do damage and it does not do paint, which are two things that indirectly, I believe are very important right now. The damage is important because a lot of specials have a lot of HP in this game. Big Bubbler and Crab Tank are some of the most important and having a bomb to throw at it is super important. And the second thing is paint because the specials are all 200p now for the most part. This means the special Economy is actually somewhat difficult and you don't get stuff for free. And so having a sub weapon that does not provide paint for most weapons is going to be really problematic. And so right now I think mist is only okay on very specific weapons. They should paint the area covers. I don't think they should do that. Personally to me the route I'd like to see them do with toxic mist which I've talked about before is giving more of a reward to hitting it. Mainly you could apply a similar effect to Splatoon 1 Disruptor but for not as long. I think the ability to actually stun and prevent another player players options for a shorter period of time means they won't contribute as much to the pain damage and have more downtime which is much more valuable and it also makes the sub weapon way more fun so that's a route i'd like to see them go to but as of right now with the indirect changes to splatoon 3 i think it hurts missed more than it helps it and it already wasn't in a good spot Lean says most Western top players don't know how to properly make suggestions about balancing the game and instead just make suggestions that benefit their inability to adapt. Yeah, overall, I've definitely seen a lot of balance complaints about things that I would disagree with or don't think is a problem. And the main one of these is nerfing machine. Like I've seen a lot of comments that machine needs nerfs as a main weapon and I just completely disagree, but I'll talk about that more later. I think my perspective is a little bit different because I kind of approach things from a more design perspective so I'll have interest to change some things in unique ways that don't really matter balance wise such as like sprinkler getting a message when it's destroyed doesn't really do much to make the sub better or fix an inherent problem it's just oh this is cool depth to add to the sub and in general that's kind of how i approach things so i think my perspective is a little bit different but as a whole really i don't think most western top players even have that many opinions on balancing the game i have not seen anyone else do a theoretical patch and i haven't even seen anyone else give an opinion on more than like three weapons in the game and it's kind of annoying post your opinions more top players seriously i don't care if they're good or not but like you guys are quiet i want to hear stuff gus says whenever non-shooter weapons become meta people shooter mains want to see it nerfed into the ground nerf machine e-leader etc the same thing happened with ball points dualies brellas etc i think this is more on the casual or lower level side of things but yeah a lot of weapons that are good at dealing with w key or shooters get complained about quite a lot speaking of which ink armor needs to return we desperately need a counter to one hit chaos looking at the current meta which which is defined by leader, blaster, machine, and zooka weapons. Defensive specials like bubbler do nothing to aid a push, while armor would give more weapons a chance to shine. Chad is enjoying this one. <laughs> All right, so first of all, this is not actually what's dominating the meta. Machine is falling off, Blaster still has not commonly actually won anything, and Zooka is not a common special right now because of its inability to slot into comps, nor would armor even work against it because it's a multi-hit. If you shoot someone's spawn armor, you can one-hit kill them, so that wouldn't even help for that special. Here's the thing. Let's assume a situation where Blaster and Leader are meta, and you would have like three one-shots in every single team comp. The solution is still not to bring back a special that forces you to play around it in every team fight and otherwise you have a complete disadvantage against those one shots. You're creating a game where it's either we have the special and get to do things or we don't have the special and get to do things, which is what Splatoon 2 was by the way, which if you don't remember was not very fun. Realistically, if these weapons are overtuned, the solution is to just give them more downtime or lag so they're easier to fight, but realistically, None of these weapons are that good except E-Leader, and E-Leader is only really good because of the maps anyway, like I've established earlier. I don't think any of these are a problem. The solution is balancing that's actually smart instead of putting a crutch in the game that you have to rely on to do anything. Like, actual hard counter crutches are not good balancing. They're horrible. And that'll mark all the hot takes we can get to for now. I'll be going over part two in a future video. I'll see you guys then.